we had a near disaster. Put my hand in like a puddle of water. Yeah, I think we have a broken wind barrier. Hi, we're Mel and Jay. Together with our cat, Benny, we're traveling the Baja Peninsula all the way to Cabo and back. This is our adventure in Guerrero Negro, the most underrated town in Baja, where we make friends with whales, discover the food scene, and tour the world's largest sea salt plant. This truck in front of us looks quite unsafe. Oh, he just trimmed oh. another tree. <laughs> <laughs> He's loaded up with rebar, and he's like loaded heavily to the right side. He's hugging the right side of the road. Oh, <gasps> I just, just saw him take a sign. He just hit a sign and it flipped. And it, oh like, man. Spun. Yeah, so Mel's, Mel's gonna get a little more B-roll of this. Here, he's coming up to another sign, I think. Here we go, here we go. Aww. After he hit that one, he's probably being more cautious now. Oh, there we go. Yeah, oh he God, hit that I'm one. Waiting. Yeah, we're keeping our distance. It's it's a no bueno situation. Yeah, it, it doesn't look safe. At least it looks really unsafe to us. I don't know. We aren't truck drivers. If you're a truck driver and you think that this is okay, then please let us know. Hola, buenos dias. Espanol un poco. Un poco. Sí. Uh, a Guerrero Negro. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Pero um, un momento es un gato. Es un perro. Uh, gato. gato. Ah. Hey. Puede pasar adelante. Pues, uh, de adelante. Oh, muy sí. Oh, bueno. Sí. Pero adelante. Sí. Okay. Oh, bueno, adelante. gracias. Sí. Oh, all done. Yeah. Oh, okay. Benny saved us some time today. Good boy, Babu. <laughs> so this might look like snow, but that's actually salt. That's a lot of salt. This whole trench looks like we're back in Canada. <laughs> We're here and it's windy. Whew. Gotta check if the trailer is at the right angle for the wind though. Basically want our slide pointing right towards the wind. Uh, yeah, I think that's gonna do it. How's it look? Oh, the trailer is acting as the perfect wind block. We'll get our little beach fence under, on the other side to block the wind coming from underneath the trailer. And this is gonna be perfect. Good morning. The wind has died down just a little bit this morning. And so we're gonna take advantage of that and go for a little walk. And we're bringing Benny with us. So it's a little bit cooler than some of the temperatures we had down south about 13 degrees Celsius. We're quite bundled, as you can see. However, currently at home, they're experiencing a snowstorm. <laughs> so <laughs> we can hear the tiny violins. Of yeah, them. we still feel pretty fortunate to be down here. Yeah. Beautiful views, and it should warm up to at least 20 or so today.
some pretty crazy wind. So what's happening? I woke up to like what sounded like water dripping. And as I put my hand on the window, I put my hand in like a puddle of water. Amazingly, our wind fence is still standing in these gusts. The wind is so strong that it's blowing the rain directly under the tiny little vents in the window frame. Yeah, we've never seen that before. Wow, what a crazy windstorm last night. It was just howling and howling. It was rocking the trailer back and forth. Thankfully though, we're getting pretty good at knowing how to park in the wind. We knew that the wind was coming from the northwest, which is exactly that way. Probably some of the strongest winds that we've been in. It looks like the wind barrier actually toppled slightly right here in the middle. I couldn't see this last night. Oh boy. Yeah, I think we have a broken wind barrier. It actually snapped. Well, that's really sad. This wind barrier has been so good for us. So yeah, one casualty of the wind. Starlink was swinging around a little bit, but it's held quite nicely. And yeah, the weather report says that was pretty much the worst of the wind. It's gonna get a little better from here on in. So uh, fingers crossed, here's hoping that's actually accurate. Decent size. So there's apparently more than 1,200 whales here. We're gonna walk out to the end of this pier here. We're expecting it to be very windy. I'm seeing some whale poofs. Whale poofs? <laughs> A whale poof. That's when they breathe and That's they go the poof. Term. Well, there's lots of whales out there, but we've decided it's not exactly ideal watching conditions. So I think we're gonna retreat back to the trailer. What do you think? Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, let's go. Every winter, gray whales from Alaska migrate to the shallow warm lagoons of Baja to mate and deliver their young. The spectacle attracts hundreds of tourists between the months of January through March because the Baja lagoons are the only place in the world where gray whales approach small boats to purposely interact with people. So we came here to see some whales on Monday. It is now Thursday. We don't know for sure if they're going out yet. We can see a boat, but we think they're maybe just kind of scouting to see if the conditions are okay. So we had a near disaster. I was figuring that they would take card, but it's cash only. So I had to run back to the trailer and get some extra cash, but now we're good, so.
Well, all that whale watching has worked up a bit of an appetite. So we are gonna go on a food tour now of Guerrero Negro. We got some recommendations from some friends, thanks Joe and Carla, who have already been here and told us the top picks for where to go and eat. So we've just arrived to Birria Brienda, our first stop on today's food tour in Guerrero Negro. And we have been advised to try the torta. Bien, gracias. Um, these sound amazing. So we've just sat down and this place is packed. We just got the last seat. All right, our quesa torta has arrived. I'm really glad that we only got one to share. Oh my God. This is like the best roast beef sandwich you will ever have. Now we are at Carlito's Birriaria, and we have been recommended to try the papas rellenas, which is a stuffed baked potato. Oh my gosh, this looks amazing. Wow. So what we've done, what they've done here is they've got baked potato, and then they've put on top birria meat and some kind of sauce and corn. He told us we should eat it with the um, quesadillas that we've got here. The potato and the meat. Take some onion. Cabbage? I think it's cabbage. Some cilantro. And then we've got some kind of other sauce. Oh, this is gonna be hot. I see lots of like chili pieces. A little squeeze of lime. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's my new favorite way to eat birria. Okay, well that was absolutely delicious as well. But not only that, the guys here working were just like the nicest guys ever. They came over to our table and started chatting us up. You know, there was a language barrier between on both sides here, but we managed to, to you know, have some nice conversation. And they made some recommendations for other places for us to check out in the area. How cool is that? All right, so these first two stops that we went to, you have to get here early because they close at 2.30 in the afternoon. So they're more of like a brunch, lunch kind of thing. The next stop though is open later. I think they're open till five or 5.30. So we have reached our third stop here at Tacos El Muelle and it's a food truck stop. Si, uh, uno pescado y uno camarón, por favor. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what they put in that bottle, but it's really good. I ordered. They told me to wash my hands, and the next thing I knew, they were handing me food. I forgot to pay. And they didn't ask, so... They wish you pay. So now we'll go pay. <laughs> well, now that we are sufficiently stuffed, we can go back to the trailer and have a nap. Right, it's time for our camp tour. When you get here, you'll find a row with a whole bunch of different campsites all along. Now the first few have palapas. They cost a little bit more and they're also closer to the museum and site where you go to buy your whale tickets. If you come on further past the palapas, then there are campsites and they are more than large enough for probably multiple rigs. We are staying on campsite number nine. And then dotted along at almost every campsite, there is a garbage bin and every maybe second campsite, there's an outhouse. So not too shabby. The nearest dumping station is in town. Same with water, everything. So any kind of resources that you need, you have to go into town. That's somewhere between a 30 to 45 minute drive away from here. So come prepared. The road is hard packed sand, so it's 
decent to drive on. We're not gonna get stuck. It is a bit bumpy though. We'll warn you about that. You'll also note there are some stands with huge nests on top. Those are for the osprey. Otherwise, the main attraction here is to see the whales. I should mention that all of the sites here are on a first come, first serve basis, and you pay at the gate when you first arrive. It's 100 pesos a night, and that's it. Well, it's our last full day in Ojo de Libra, the lagoon with all the whales here. And we finally had really nice weather. It was super calm this morning. We've got our nice wind block here with the trailer, but now we're gonna head into the town of Guerrero Negro for a little bit more exploring. Now, most people come to Guerrero Negro just to see the whales, but there are other things to do here, like the food tour that we did. Right now, we're gonna go and take a tour of the salt works. Salinas Los Amargos is the world's largest sea salt factory, exporting over $150 million of sea salt each year. Seawater is pumped into the 77 ponds on the premises and allowed to evaporate. It takes about one and a half to two years before the salt that's left behind can be harvested. And harvesting takes place 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, using these massive machines that can hold 120 metric tons tons of salt in each bin. The salt is then washed and stored. That's a lot of salt. Until it's shipped to buyers. We haven't stayed in too many RV parks on this trip, but it was good here in Guerrero Negro to stay this one night so we could get gas, propane, water, and also dump our tanks. Because next we're heading out to an area with not that many services. So we wanna make sure we have everything going into that section. We also did a grocery run and stocked up our fridge and cupboards because we're not sure what the stores are gonna be like on this next little section of our journey. Even here in this fairly big town, we tried to get eggs and the two big grocery stores that they have, both out of eggs. So hopefully some of the smaller stores along the way will have some. Well, we're all packed up, hitched up, and we've done all our chores here, so we're ready to go. Next week though, we will be checking out one of the other surf towns in the area, but we are gonna check out um, Santa Rosa La Ita. We'll see you then. We've just arrived to Biriri. Well, I can't even say the word. <laughs> so we've just arrived to Biriria Biran Brian Pla. This is like a tongue twister, like I cannot say it. So it's a little bit cooler than some of the temperature. So now we are at Carlitos Biri. Oh, I still got it wrong. Biriaria. And And that's it. Make sure you don't miss the next video by liking, subscribing, and turning on notifications. Oh, and don't forget to check out our website and sign up for our weekly email blast. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you in the next one.